Welcome to the Electronics Basics series. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon to get notifications. I'm doing a video every day, so make sure you come back again tomorrow. So today, we're going to cover capacitors. I've got a selection just here on my desk. I've got some service mount caps in here and some sample books. I've got a range of capacitors here which I have in stock. I'm going to cover the mains ones first, right, because this is quite an important aspect of mains capacitors. There's X-class and Y-class capacitors. These are used for EMI suppression and things like that across the mains and line to ground sort of stuff as well, which is used to filter noise from equipment and to equipment on the AC mains cable. So we've got a Y-class cap here. Y-class goes line to ground. So basically this will go between the phase or the hot side or whatever you may call it in your country, the main AC feed. That goes to ground. Y-class caps are designed to fail open. So if this fails, it will go to an open circuit. These are X-class caps. These ones here, different types. These are all basically different values and stuff like that. Got different ratings on them, what have you. This is a relatively cheap one, it's a Suntan brand. Got some other ones here which are better brands, I'm not quite sure which ones these are, but they're better brands. These are more expensive ones. These are X2 caps. This one's 630 volts rated, give you an idea. This one's 305 volts AC rated. Now these are say, X class. X class caps are designed to fail short. So what these are, these are across the line. So if you go between your two inputs for your AC circuits, so you've got your phase and your neutral or you're hot and you're whatever you might be, I don't know what it's called, but the two AC lines coming in, not the earth, but the other two lines, we will be we across them. So what happens if one of these caps fails, so it will short out and short out across your AC input and hopefully blow your fuse. That's the intention of those things, all right? So these are just different S class caps. Over here we've got some other general types. We've got some green caps here. It's a plastic film cap here. We've got a ceramic here. We've got another plastic cap, dip, dip cap here. Here's a tantalum. These are used in quite fast acting noise suppression systems. So in digital circuitry, you have a lot of tantalums often, but they are prone to failure if they get an excessive voltage applied to them or reverse voltage or excessive amounts of ripple, which these didn't have to deal with. These are meant for really fast response, very low ESR. Low ESR means low effective series resistance, which means it can source a lot of current in a short time. It's very fast to react. These don't like a lot of ripple because it puts a lot of stress on them. If they're in a good situation, they'll last many, many years, decades. Over here, we've got some electrolytic capacitors, different types. So we've got a small one here, which is one microfarad. This is just rated for 50 volts. These are used in like power supply and, and for smoothing out main AC or DC supplies. This is an 82 microfarad, 82 times bigger, but it's 450 volts, right? So this is often used in like mains power supplies, switch mode power supplies, that kind of thing. This one's 15,000 microfarad at 16 volts. Again, this will be used in power supply systems. So once it's been converted to DC from AC, you need smoothing to get the noise out and get the ripple out of it. You'd have big capacitors like this and those sorts of lines. The voltage rating you should try and keep well clear of. I should mention that for the tantalums as well. Tantalums, I recommend at least three times the voltage rating. So if you're running a 15 volt rail, a 35 volt cap is borderline. You probably want to go a bit higher than that, for example. You want to go at least twice, ideally three times the voltage rating on tantalums. Electrolytics, not so much, you know, have twice the voltage rating, one and a half times the voltage rating, absolutely fine. Um, they're designed for it in a different way. So you could run 12 volt supply for 16 volt, no problem at all. Even you'll have a ripple from AC. These ones are Axial electrolytic caps. Uh, these are 63 volt, 22 microfarad, these particular ones. They will work the same way. Obviously, I've got service mount caps here as well. So these are 0402s, these ones. So tiny little ceramic cap assets. And these also have their own ratings. You've got COG and the oh, other ones in here, X7R. So these have got different ratings as well. These are to do with stability and stuff like that and accuracy and the characteristics between us two. I might even put a little chart explaining that maybe. I should actually tell you what a capacitor basically is. Now give me some examples. It's basically two plates which are not touching but close together. And they'll, one, if it's put a voltage on one side, it will induce a voltage on the other side. Kind of. Right. <laughs> It acts a bit like a battery, right? So they hold a charge like a battery does. And so depending on how you use them, like a ceramic capacitor, for example, or these green caps, these might be used in AC circuitry and you're actually passing AC through the capacitor. These, you won't be doing that. You'll be doing these on basically DC circuit. In this. To act like a battery, basically an energy storage device, that's effectively what they do. Different uh, response times. Some are faster than others. These are slow to respond. These are fast to respond. So these will dump the charge and accept the charge much faster than these will. Mixing capacitor types, like especially with ceramic caps like these, you'd often see like a 100 nanofarad cap used on a circuit board, 
for digital electronics, right? So to do decoupling, you might see that value or similar value scattered across the board, and those are to try and capture noise at different frequencies. So Dave Jones EU box done a really good video on, on capacitors and how to do decoupling and how to actually use different values to try and get different types of noise across different capacitors. So a capacitor is basically two plates that are side by side. It could be small plates, which in a, like in a ceramic capacitor, these are pretty small plates, so basically, you know, it's small area. In these, it's basically a foil which is rolled up inside the capacitor, so like a, a rolled up, a bit like in a battery, same thing. Um, so that's what a higher capacity. And it acts like a battery, so it will store and hold a charge. Now, how big the plates are and how close they are, what the dielectric material is, which is the material between the plates, they will have an effect, such as the ability to withstand voltage. Like this one here is a 630 volt cap. So it has got a pretty substantial dielectric. Um, some of these older ones, that dielectric's really, really thin. This is the tantalum capacitor. It's got the tantalum dielectric. Capacitors can be used in different ways. Some are to store charge, like in these, to store some energy and then release it again in AC to DC converters and that sort of stuff where they're actually smoothing out the ripple from AC line. These store it and release it. Other times you're using them for filtering, so you will create a phase difference on like an AC circuit or something like that. It will pass it through the capacitor. You will get a phase difference as it passes through the capacitor, because the way the capacitor reacts. You also get a similar thing with inductors, which I may or may not cover. I may do a later video on that, but inductors are basically the opposite of capacitor, the way they work. So voltage and current won't actually be in phase with each other. So you think about an AC system where it's a sine wave, and you think, okay, there's a sine wave of voltage. Well, current, ideally, is on directly on top of that voltage sine wave but you can get a phase difference between current and voltage and that's where you get apparent power and reactive power and stuff like that. I might get into that later on. Capacitors and inductors can be used to change that phase shift in an AC system but that's beyond what I'm covering now. I sort of should throw it in there to make you interested. So a capacitor is an energy storage device a bit like a battery but in much much smaller capacities generally unless you have a super capacitor which basically are very low voltage but really high capacitance in a small package they can actually be used to replace batteries in some instances such as digital electronics and microcontrollers where you've got like a memory backup for doing ram backup and stuff like that non-volatile memory and volatile memory there's countless versions of, of capacitor dielectrics and capacitor designs there's loads and loads of different types so it's a bit hard to cover them all in detail in any real meaningful way I just wanted to give you the basics that they store energy. What you do with handling the energy depends on the capacitor. So the service mount capacitors, just like the resistors, come in lots of different package styles, including all the ones which I showed previously. All these sizes here are typical sizes. 0603, 0005 are very commonly used. As you can solder these by hand, as long as you've got some reasonable gear, you can do it. You don't need much. These smaller sizes you can also do by hand, but it's a bit tricky because they are really small. If you're doing stuff yourself, You'd probably want to use like F5, maybe even 1206 if you need a space, but if you've got heaps of room, you might do that. Just make it really easy for yourself, but oh, out of 5 is easily soldable by hand. You can do it with a soldering iron. Less than that, you probably want to think about using paste, but we'll get to that later on in another video. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon if you want to see more of these videos. Thumbs up if you liked it, if you found it interesting, and don't forget to come back tomorrow to see some more. Bye.